Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Teresa McCoy, and I am your host of the Do What Matters podcast. Living from Rest Not Rush is often the topic that we talk about here on the podcast. What does that mean like? What does it look like? So we talk to special guests. I do some solo episodes, and we hang out together around this topic of living from rest, not rush, so we can truly do what matters. So on this episode today, I'm going to start something new that I'll be doing from time to time as a solo episode, and that is sharing with you a book that I have read that's been impactful in my life and maybe invite you to check out that particular book. Now, the funny story is when I grew up as a child, my mom was an English teacher and I was not a reader. I would read our assignments for our classes and things like that. And there were a few books along the way in junior high and high school that I remember and that I read, but I was not a child who would sit down and just read for entertainment. And I'm not sure exactly when that changed. I think it was probably after both of our children came along and I began to read books to them. And then I discovered a genre of personal development books, many would call them in the self-help category. And this is actually a part of my story of even purchasing book after book after book. I followed people like John Maxwell and Michael Hyatt and Dan Miller, who y'all know is one of my mentors, and many, many other people that wrote books. Uh, Stephen Covey was one of uh, the huge ones that I read all of his books. Many of you can relate. And some of them were in the faith space, and some of them were in uh, more of the business space. But I began to see such value in the stories that they would share and in the books that they would write. At one point in my life, though, it became I was almost obsessed with those as I was in what I call the workaholic years. And I was almost ex- obsessed with those kinds of books. And then I became introduced probably back in 2011, 2012, almost 10 or 12 years ago, to a genre of books in the spiritual formation space. And these became my favorite. These became the books that really were transforming for me. And so today I want to talk about one of the most impactful books that I've probably read. It would be in my top 10. And it's a book by one of my mentors, Ruth Haley Barton, and it's called Sacred Rhythms. And this particular book, actually the title is Sacred Rhythms, Arranging Our Life for Spiritual Transformation. This book was written clear back in 2006 but it is as impactful today when I read through it as it was when I first read it in 2012. This book is really looking for that longing that I was feeling back in those days and connected me to that longing for change in my life. I share the story in my own book that I have written uh, titled Do What Matters. And I share this story of a spiritual mentor that I was meeting with. I had hired him thinking I was hiring a coach. His name was Rory Noland. And I thought I was hiring a coach to help me as I was on staff as a pastor at that time, creative arts ministry, leading a team. And I hired Rory to help me in my leadership skills. And he actually did that and did that very well in my development in those years. But he also became a spiritual mentor. He introduced me to Ruth and to her work and uh, to an organization called the Transforming Center, which is still very active today. And he introduced me to this idea of these practices, this way of life, these sacred rhythms that Ruth talks about in this book, because I was at a place of longing. 
I was at a place of saying something has to change, something has to be different. As I said, I write more about that particular story in my book, but I really want to unpack just a couple of things that Ruth has in this book and invite you to check it out. It's available now through Audible. It's available in lots of different places. There is a whole uh, study and study guide that goes along with this book. But she's actually talking about the idea of spiritual disciplines. These undercurrent things that can be a part of your life as you create a rule of life as you create a way that you want to lean into of here's the foundational pieces. And back in 2011, 2012, might've been even as far back as 2009, I was looking for that foundation. I was a person who could do a lot of things, but they weren't always the right things. You've heard that phrase, leaning your ladder against the wrong wall. That's kind of where I was at that point in my life. And I came across this book uh, through my friend Rory and a lot of other excellent, excellent books that uh, Ruth has written. In fact, many of her books would be in my top 10. I love her style of writing. It's simple. It's easy to understand. She's very transparent to share her journey and her stories to finding and arranging her life for spiritual transformation. So she begins to talk about these disciplines, these rhythms, these sacred things that you can put in your life and kind of picking up on the monastic tradition of creating a rule of life that allows for these practices and these disciplines. I too, taking after Ruth as my mentor, include this in what we now call the framework of the real life process, which is literally a framework to help you develop a rule of life. And the parts of this book that really spoke to me are these, these practices that she began to introduce me to that I had no idea even existed. I was very, very ignorant at the time to any of these things. And they became foundational in my life that at that time had a lot of crisis going on and a lot of different things that were very, very difficult within our family unit, within the church I was serving in, with inside internally in my own self. I had not found how to live from rest, not rush. So this book became an introduction for me into this world, into this place. And this guide of this book, and I still go back to it today and will read a chapter every now and then. It's become a reference and a resource of just an easy read. The importance of practices like silence and solitude, how that becomes just such a core part of your day. I often talk about rest, and and one of the things I talk about with the S in the word rest is intentional slowing. It was something I did not know how to do. I wasn't aware of. And in this book, Ruth began to invite me into how do I intentionally slow down? Many of you know from listening to my podcast, if you're new uh, to listening, welcome in. But many of you know that I love the tool of the Enneagram. And I am a very forward-moving type three on the Enneagram. And my Harmony Enneagram full circle is the three, the six, and the nine. I did not know how to enter the peace of the nine. And Ruth began to unpack that in these rhythms that uh, she started to introduce in this book, the importance of carving out that time for silence and solitude, of creating space to take in uh, scripture in a different way. I was not familiar with the reading of scripture in a repetitive way called Lectio Divina. And reading it, pondering that passage, reading it again, pondering again, meditating on that scripture. 
I think I had always been introduced to scripture in a way of, you know, you read a chapter, you read an entire book, and then you move on. And it was almost that measure of how much can you read? And again, it goes back to, you know, how do we read things? How do we sit with a book, even a book like the Bible? And so being introduced to scripture that it could come alive through a story I could put myself into the gospel stories even and reflect on what character I would be. Who would I be in a gospel story? How would I have shown up as the crowd or as the mother or as the father or, you know, as one of the disciples? And that was just such an eye-opening experience for me. It also began to give me permission to not feel like I had to check the box and accomplish something. Now, I think I've shared on the podcast this year, one of the things I'm doing is reading through the Bible in a year. And I'm really into that rhythm and routine. But back 10, 12 years ago, I needed permission to take in the scripture differently. And I actually ended up just sitting with what now has become kind of my life verse and chapter, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And just letting that scripture be the one passage that was in my life for a year or two and not worrying that I wasn't reading anything else, but I was just sitting and camping with the passage that God was showing me. And that passage is in the message version. It's take your everyday ordinary life, your eating, sleeping, walking around life and place it before God as an offering. And that invitation to just be in the moment and be in the day and all of it, and God was in it with me, was exactly what I needed and what I needed to hold on to. And that came from this book and learning that practice. So, you know, silence and solitude, the practice of being with scripture, and meditating on scripture into a deeper understanding so that I could personally apply it in my life and see where it was showing up in my life was huge. The other one that was really a new introduction for me from this book was the idea of embodying the Sabbath day. Now I know for many people, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion that we could have around Sabbath and what that means. But I grew up in a home that um, we recognized what we got done. Uh, my mom was an amazing teacher. My father is a great uh, man uh, that was a farmer. They're both retired from those professions now. But they were professions that really put into me a work ethic. I was just thinking back on this in the last few weeks. We even did church in a style of work. Uh, We attended worship on Sunday morning. We attended on Sunday evening. During Wednesdays, uh, back in those days, I grew up in the 70s. We went to youth group uh, in the middle of the week. Our life revolved around church, and not in a bad way. I don't mean that at all. But it almost sometimes created more busyness and more work. And Ruth often talks about this too. She grew up in much the same way. So the idea that there was a day of Sabbath was not a concept, uh, that there was a day of rest was not a concept that I really embraced. Um, It was a day of worship, but it involves so much doing. Ruth has actually just recently written kind of one of my second favorite books by her probably, which is embracing the rhythms of work and rest from Sabbath to sabbatical and back again. Beautiful book about this idea of stepping back. So when I first read this book, uh, Sacred Rhythms, and heard about Sabbath, I was like, is that possible? Is that something that I could really practice and learn? What would it be like to take a day of rest? At the time, I was working as a pastor, so Sunday actually was not a day of rest. I took my day off on Friday, but usually Saturday, I was still thinking about the upcoming next day of work and uh, 
as a worship person, you know, the team, the band, the music, the screens, the slides, all the things. So by Saturday evening, I was moving back into work mode. And Sunday was really taken up with those activities. And I will say that has been some of the hardest work I've done is to learn to lean into this practice of what I now call in the work that I do, the fourth component that we teach about is rest, renew, and review. So what does it look like to have a day that's renewing and full of hobbies and fun and activities and not always activities, but unplanned. To me, my renewal day has nothing planned on it. If it is, it's very intentional planning of with others in relationship and activities that I want to participate in and do and explore and maybe line up with uh, hobbies and things like that. And then the day of rest comes, the renewal uh, day is my Saturday, the day of rest is Sunday, and I want it to look and feel very different. I want it to be a day that involves some form of worship uh, in community or my own silent worship and retreat. I want it to be a day that is very slow, has a different pace to it. And all of that was introduced to me over 12, 13 years ago through this book. So I just invite you to, if you are looking and longing for some rhythms, routines, and behaviors, those are the three words that I love to use as part of building out a rule of life, is there needs to be rhythms, sacred rhythms that comes in. There needs to be some behavioral changes, which I had to make as well to incorporate these things in. And, and building them into routines that happen in my life. One of my favorite routines that I've built in is, is a practice of uh, retreat. Ruth has another book around that called Invitation to Retreat. What does it look like to do a reset about every 90 days? And where do we see that modeled in scripture and through others? Uh, I was talking with someone yesterday and they called it a thinking day a process day. So I just want to share with you the value of reading, the value of reading the right kinds of books. If you're in a season where you're feeling very sped up, maybe it's looking at this genre of spiritual formation books that will invite you to some internal work instead of external work. And this book for me has been one of the most impactful books that I could share with you. So I hope you enjoy as we kind of review some books every now and then. And I wanted to start with this one because it relates so much to my story, so much to the deep work that I've had to do over the past uh, 12 to 15 year journey that I've been on to say, how could I do life differently? How could I live from a place of rest and not rush? And I just so grateful to uh, Ruth Haley Barton and the work that she's done as an author. I've been able to sit in her teaching and with her and spend a lot of time in the Transforming Center for several years uh, through her program. We'll have links to the book and to the Transforming Center and to all of those things in our show notes. But if you have any questions, if you would like to connect around any of the books that I talk about on these episodes, just reach out to me. You can find me in social media platforms. You can find me at our website, therealliprocess.com. If this type of work really, truly interests you, you might want to check out our certification program that we certify coaches in the process that we have of helping people to create a rule of life. So until next time, remember that every ordinary day has an extraordinary moment You just have to look for them and make the space through some sacred rhythms. Have a great week, everyone.